Hi guys, I welcome you all to the 14th video of module 5 and here we are going to first of all create a pandas data frame. I am going to show you how you can exactly do this in order to compare the actual outputs with our predicted outputs and then visualize this cost function output with respect to the epochs that is as the epochs are increasing what is really happening to the cost? Is it getting converged or what exactly is happening? So all of these kind of things will be understanding in this video. So let's get into it. Now let's go ahead and compare the initial and the final values of the weights, bias and cost and then display it in the format of a table with the help of pandas data frame. There might be a lot of new keywords for you over here. So let me explain everything step by step. So to have that kind of comparison table over here, I'll be requiring one library. Now this library, I haven't taught you anywhere explicitly in this whole program. But now that you know how to use NumPy and Matplotlib, the process is just the similar, all right? So I'll be requiring the pandas library. So I'll say that import pandas spd. And after this, I'll be having two columns to display in this data frame. Uh, that is the table that I'm trying to create over here. One is the initial one and the other one is the final. Now in this initial, I want to display the first values in the list of weights, bias and the costs that we have extracted over here. From this weights list, this biases list and the cost list. The last value and the first value is something I want. First value are the initial values. The last values are the values at the last epoch. So by doing this, what I can do over here is I can say that my initial is actually having the list of weights, the zero or the weight present on the zeroth index. Similarly, bias is present on the zeroth index and the cost present on the zeroth index of the cost list. And just like this, I'll have a final list over here for me. I'll just copy this part, paste it over here. And I want last values. Therefore, minus one minus one is something I'll have over here. And this is also minus one. So now I know what is the initial values of the weight bias and cost. And then what is the final values with respect to that itself. Now I have to figure out that how can I use pandas library to get that data frame. And I can call this data frame as df. And to create this kind of data frame, I'll be using pandas dot data frame. So this is the command that I'm going to simply use over here. And now what all things I'll be passing inside, I'll be zipping these two things, that is the initial and the final column. I'll zip it and convert it into a list. And that list is going to be the part of the input of this data frame. So how can I do this? I'll say that I want to zip the initial and the final lists and convert it into one list over here. And this is going to get me what the overall table that I'm looking forward to. So let's see how the output looks like currently. So you can see that the table is there, but we are not really able to understand what's happening over here. And therefore I'll be giving name to these columns. Also the name for the rows. Now the way through which you can give names to the uh, columns is by using something that we call as columns as the input argument that we give with the data frame and say that this will be equal to the first one is initial and the second one is final. And I'll also just take it to the next line over here. And similarly to give the name to the row, I'll be using index. Okay, So this 0, 1, 2 are actually the index for the rows. So now what should be the index? So I can again pass it in the format of a list over here. I'll say that the index that I'm having is the first one was I can see is at weight. After weight, I am having bias. And after bias, I am having cost. And now if I run this, this should look much better. Indeed, it is looking great. We can see that initial weight was zero, initial bias value was zero, but the final one this one is indeed closer to 2. Bias is again closer to somewhere around 9.5. And the cost, the first cost when this was the weight and bias was this high, it might be again 
pretty much a complete different value based on your initial value of the weight and bias. But the last value should be closer to what I have achieved over here. If it's not same, if it's not close to 2, not close to 9.5 and the cost is not small, it means there is some kind of a problem you need to rectify. Right? And now if I just scroll up to the data set that we had created at the starting of this particular notebook and I show you the comparison, you will realize that in this whole wide range, the weight was closer to 2 and the bias value was somewhere around 9.5. And just to show you this thing, guys, that you will be able to achieve this two and somewhere like, you know, close to 9.5 values. Only because of that, I had created this kind of a dummy data set. Now, just imagine if I had shown you a tabular data, which is not by default having this kind of a relationship, but we are using some machine learning algorithm to create this kind of relationship. Will you ever be able to understand what's really happening inside? But yes, that's that's about it, guys, that how exactly we go ahead do the training of this whole uh, linear regression uh, machine learning algorithm and then cross check if this has achieved or not. In reality, we will not have this kind of things to cross check. We'll just have the predictions. And if your predictions are good, it automatically means that your output are great for the W and B values that, that are the optimal values. All right. And this is the type of things we'll be dealing in the upcoming module and where you will have a real data of stars. All right. It's going to be super fun. And um, I just scroll down over here and complete one more code cell that I was having below that. And that is with respect to get the output of the cost with respect to the epochs that I was, I was having in my data. So for this, what I'll do is I'll just scroll down to that particular code cell and start coding uh, that part. I'll keep the figure size as 10 comma 4 plot epochs on the x-axis, costs on the y-axis, and I'll add the x-labels, y-labels, and finally the title. So for this, I can go ahead and say that plt.figure, and in this figure, I want to have a fig size of 10, 4, because that's given in the comment. And then I want to plot on the y-axis my costs, okay? I don't need to give any x because I know that in the x, I am having like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, like this kind of values. So automatically, this will be the values on the X axis over here. By default, this will be considered as the output for the Y. And now I'll just give the X label over here. I'll call it as epochs. And uh, I'll give a color of this to be magenta font size to be 11. And I guess everything else is fine. I'll just copy this part, paste it for the Y label. And the Y is the output of the cost, the J values guys. Or I can just write cost over here. I can also write like, you know, mean squared error if I want, but I, I guess cost is good. After this, I'll also have a title. What will be the title over here? Display cost change versus epochs. And uh, after I can say total of iter count. Oops, it's not actually iter count, it is epochs that we had used. I hope it was epochs in the output of this training. Yes, epochs is something that we have used for that final I value we got from the training loop. So I'll just mention it over here. I'll have the F string. I'll say that total of this many epochs were there. And finally, I'll just do plt.show. But uh, along with that, I'll also have some colors uh, over here. I'll keep it royal view. I'll keep weight of this text as bold. And let's see how the output is going to look like and get rid of this extra space. So it took total of 3248 epochs and as you can see it has started from the zeroth epoch and went all the way up to whatever uh, the value of the epoch is so yes that's the way you can see that there is a great decrease in the loss but until you achieved or the model achieved the accuracy correct to 13 decimal places for the cost function 
it kept on training and once that 13 decimal places accuracy was achieved the training got stopped and therefore it took 3248 let's say if the tolerance value in your training was not 10 to the power of negative 13 if it was 10 to the power of negative 5 okay then based on that you will see that uh, the training is completed even in much more or less epochs as compared to what we are seeing currently so yes guys that was a good display of understanding how the cost is varying as the epochs are increasing and indeed it must decrease okay it must decrease in reality this is not the type of cost outputs you will be seeing because in reality there will be a lot of noise in the data and because of which you will have some kind of this kind of peak somewhere in between it won't be as smooth and to make it more smoother you can play with the hyperparameter that is alpha value the learning rate value and you can try to decrease it to smoothen this type of graph all these kind of things you will automatically understand once you start having the experience in the neural network but that's the out of the scope uh, for this particular program but i hope that all of this process of the training part was making some sense to you over here All right, guys, that was about this particular video over here. I hope that you got this kind of an idea of how the cost decreases as the epoch increases. And this is really a good model that we are having as of now. So now it's time to go ahead and test this particular uh, model that we have created on the testing data set. And that's something we'll be generating in the next video.